everybody doesn't win. And the sooner you wake up to that, that biology is ruthless, man, then you get a little fear in you. And when you get a little fear in you, you start listening. Because if you're truly afraid, you listen. Let a little fear come in and drive you and motivate you. We're set up for failure because we think we're going north, but we're going south. That's why 50% of people who get married divorce, 80% of businesses fail. That's why 30% of Americans are on some form of antidepressant medication. That's why 60, 70% of people are overweight. I mean, in a way, we're kind of fucked. But we live in a society that's very narcissistic. You're told like, oh, everybody is a winner. No, not everybody's a winner. That's like saying everybody's blonde. There's a definition of what blonde is. Blonde is like this yellowish hair. So you lose meaning when you start going, everybody's blonde. When you see your life and anytime there should be pain, you go, no, 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 no. It was just how it was meant to be. No, look yourself in the mirror sometimes and go, you know why I'm not happy? It's because I didn't listen 10 years ago and I got in the wrong career. You know I'm not happy? Because I married the wrong damn person. It wasn't meant to happen. Yes, everything happens for a reason. You made a bad choice, but it didn't have to be that way. And the second you build up pain, and this by the way is not my opinion. If you talk to guys like Dr. David Buss, top 10 most cited uh, psychologist in history, okay, he's one of my main mentors, he told me, I said, do adults change? Like we do all this self-help videos and podcasts. I said, am I wasting my time? He goes, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I said, why? He said, well, after 25, it's very hard to teach old dogs new tricks. By the way, that's why I've changed most of my stuff targets people 18 to 25. That's why I do Snapchat and all that. Cause there's hope for 18 to 25 year olds. Now, if you're over 25, before you get depressed, he told me, but I have good news for you, Ty. I said, what? He said, adults learn through massive trauma. So you will learn. You have to let in some trauma into your life. And that's rough, but no pain, no gain. Like if you are 100 pounds overweight and you want to be able to play basketball, here's my news for you. Everything happened for a reason. You got fat because you ate too much and you didn't exercise. So welcome to the gym. In the first year is going to be hell, but that pain, hopefully, will reprogram your brain that every time you want to eat that nasty thing, go, wait, I don't want to go through that pain again. So I think one of the myths of society is we won't let pain in. We just excuse it all away. Like, no, that was meant to happen. Oh, you wasted 20 years of life married to the wrong person in the wrong career? No, Tom, it was meant to happen. Where's the people who go, you fucked up, dude. <laughs> you wasted 20 years and you will never get it back. You better go in your room and cry. And the truth is you only learn as an adult Unfortunately, most people can only change with mass and trauma. Optimizing your life for hustling and grinding is like optimizing your life around going pee. No, pee is something you have to do. It's not the goal. You don't go, woo! You know what my goal is? Hit the toilet seven times a day. No, but you have to do it to survive. So grinding and working hard and hustling is not what you optimize for. It's pain. Why would you optimize for pain? But as in this, it is a necessity. And if you look at an actual scientific explanation of what makes you successful, it is not just hard work. If that's true, construction workers would be the wealthiest people in the world. Waiters and busboys, they work harder than the owner. The most scientific psychometric personality test is called Hexaco. It's more accurate than big five, which used to be, it's much more accurate than Myers-Briggs, INFJ, ENTP, all that stuff. So Hexaco tests you on 26 facets of your personality. And one of them's called conscientiousness. And it's been proven over and over by scientists, conscientiousness is the most correlated with business success. Define conscientiousness. So, yeah. so then it divides into four sub facets, organization, perfectionism, diligence, and prudence. So the real truth is hard work is 25% of the formula because diligence is known in the common language as hard work, okay? So if you just think diligence alone will get you success, you're like a basketball player that thinks you'll play in the NBA because you can shoot free throws. Ah, there's, you ever seen the best free throw shoes in the world? They're old 70 year old men 
who shoot underhanded. But they don't play in the NBA because the NBA is not all about free throws. So NBA is scoring, defense, free throws maybe is one component, rebounding, assists, there's a lot of components. So the other three you have to get good at. So the first one is perfectionism. People, you have to know how to double check your work. It's that simple. It doesn't mean you're always a perfectionist, but it means when it's important, when you're a pilot of an airplane, double check before you go. They, if you get on a plane, you hear the pilots double checking, the co-pilot going, you know, hydraulics. And the guy goes, hydraulics. And that's why planes don't crash. And it's called Six Sigma. It's three defects per million. Your goal in business and in life on the important things is to make three mistakes per million transactions. And the only way you do that is by being a perfectionist in terms of double checking. So that's 25%. The next one is organization. I can't tell you how much better my life is and anybody watching this will be if you wake up every single day and you take 10 minutes. I have yellow notepads sitting all around my house. I got that from Bill Gates. Bill Gates built Microsoft at 17 by locking himself in a hotel room with six yellow notepads and he wrote out the whole basic code for DOS and things that built Microsoft, okay? He became the richest man in the world 18 years straight because he was organized enough to lock himself in a room and think through his day. And so what I try to do, and whenever I do this, I have a great day. Whenever I don't, I notice it. Be organized a little bit, 10 minutes. I actually have this little couch thing outside of my shower and I put a notepad by it. I take a shower when I wake up. I walk over to that, I kind of sit there and I just write out, I mean, it can be as little as three main projects you wanna get done that day. So organization is the other 25%. So now, and then you have diligence, which is hard work, hustle and, and perseverance. But the last one is the kicker. And this is what I was talking about, the rewiring that has to happen. The last one is something called prudence. Scientists call this prudence. Prudence is the ability to make the right decision. And I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs, even me at times too, I'm not special, I'm, I'm lumping all of us in this. Because of our upbringing society, our goal is, let's say our goal is like that camera right there. So let's assume that's north. So I have this compass in my brain and my goal is to go right there. Let's say it's a mile away, so north. What happens if society, my upbringing in school, wired my compass exactly backwards? So I think, let's say I can't see that camera, but I know I wanna go north, so I pull out my, my compass and it points that way. So I just take off walking and I do it in an organized fashion. I do it in a perfectionist manner. I'm perfecting my steps and my posture. I'm also working on, you know, hard work and hustle. Keep walking towards your goal. Well, the truth is, if you go south when you should go north, you could have gone one mile, but the earth is about 24,000 miles in circumference. So you get to walk 24,000 miles and you'll come up on the backside and you will get your goal. That's most entrepreneurs. The average person takes 20 years to become a millionaire. 90% of businesses fail within the first five years, 80 to 90, depending on what statistic. Most people, I did the math once, the average American has $60,000 saved by the time they're about 60 years old. So my answer, I did the math, you can do this with a simple financial calculator. Everybody in America, your parents, everybody you know will be a millionaire if they live to 160. At 160 years old, you take 60 grand at age 60 and you give it a decent return on investment, 8%, 10%, you'll be a millionaire at 160. But the problem is, the great philosopher, I think it was Aristotle or Socrates said, the problem is art is long, but life is short. Mm -hmm. The art of living and getting to your objective is long, but it doesn't have to be. It's long if your compass is backwards. So the whole point of what I was saying about adventure at the beginning is I'm trying to take myself and point it to the true north. And you have to learn that from books and mentors and life experience and listening and finding in-person mentors and all those things. They help adjust your compass. And most people are gonna get what they want just about 40 years longer. Are there like key principles though that you can use to turn that compass so north actually points north? Yes. First one is just like Alcoholics Anonymous, admit you're lost. And that one's hard for people. You tell people, even for me, sometimes I wanna think I'm smart and I got it all figured out. And sometimes I'm like, wait a sec, I'm still lost. 
And that, that, the acquiescence, the, the admittance of the fact that you're still lost, it gets you on track a lot faster. So if you're watching this and you feel lost, it's better to just sit down and be like, I'm lost. Because the day you admit you're lost is the day you allow yourself to be found by people who can give you a tip. And but what's the, what's the equivalent of that? Because obviously if you're an entrepreneur, nobody's looking for you. So that's the one They are though. Right? Who is? They are. They're, you go to Barnes & Noble, people selling their books. They're looking for you as a customer. So read. Read. I mean, the fact that people argue with me on this reading thing, and people argue with me about mentors. No, just use your own gut feeling. Is that how you learn English? When you were two years old, you use your gut feeling to start conjugating verbs? No, you learn from other people. You learn manners, you learn language, you learn all things valuable. You learn to drive from another person. So doesn't it make sense you learn life? So books are just the mentors who maybe are dead now. You wanna learn about Steve Jobs? He ain't alive to teach you. But you can learn through accumulated wisdom. And that's why, trust me, I meet I, very few powerful businessmen I've ever met. Um, don't read a lot. Warren Buffett, who I think is the best businessman by far in the world, he has, done, he has 75 companies that he pretty much runs. 200 billion in revenue. He reads eight hours a day. He reads 600. He said he slowed down in his old age. He only reads 500 pages a day. Bill Gates goes on reading vacations. Mark Zuckerberg just start, started a reading once a week book club on Facebook and already got a couple million uh, followers. And now with audio books, there's no excuse. You got YouTube videos. Let this thing run in the background. And it's better if you can find it. I mean, better than books is in-person mentor. That's why I do a podcast. It, I started Google AdWords in 2001. Okay, I, was, I got lucky. I just stumbled and I was one of the first people to ever use online advertising. I was in, I think, the second month Google AdWords launched. Whoa. And there was no YouTube videos. There was no Perry Marshall books. There was, there was nothing. You just kind of wasted money to learn. Now, we're the most spoiled generation. Everything, this computer on this phone, iPhone 7, is more powerful than the first rocket that put man on the moon that cost billions of dollars. Now we get that for under a thousand bucks. And people are still like, I'm lost. Yes, you're lost. Sit down and then open up Safari and go, how to do Google ads. And you're gonna come up, let's see what I come up with. AdWords, they have their own tutorial. WordStream, Jumpify, you got some paid stuff. Then you have some free stuff on HubSpot. If you sit in a chair, Charlie Munger calls it assiduity. Put your ass in a chair. <laughs> sit there and focus without being, you know the average American right now, the average person in the world, our attention span has dropped to five seconds. The sad news is the average goldfish has six seconds. We're now competing with goldfish and the goldfish are winning. <laughs> so if you don't have assiduity to sit down, read, um, there is no solution for you. You will always be poor because you'll always be beat by somebody who's willing to sit in the chair. Is there a way for people to build that discipline? Yes, pain. And that's why I'm not a big believer in delusion. You know, you asked me one of the rewiring things we have to do in this world. I'll tell you one. You ever heard this myth? Everything happens for a reason, so just accept it. Well, there's kind of truth to that. If I jump off a building and break my legs, yes, everything happened for a reason. The reason was gravity. Like that's why you break your legs and physics. Legs brittle, it's concrete not brittle. So, that, but people interpret everything happens to a reason, be like, well, I was meant to learn from that thing and then BS, read Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene, one of the most important books written in the last century. He says, organisms that only learn through trial and error lose to organisms that can learn through other people's trial and error. Is anybody here, we got a little live audience, anybody here ever had to be hit by a car to <laughs> learn to look both ways? I didn't, I kind of learned from just somebody telling me, big car, two tons, velocity, smash, dead. And I now always look both ways. So if your myth is that the only way you're gonna learn is just through massive mistakes and trials and error. You haven't read Richard Dawkins' book. If you believe in evolution, or even you don't, you believe in creationism or whatever, why do we have big brains? Because we do have the biggest brains um, on planet Earth. Not always use them, but we got the biggest potential. 
It's to be able to what Richard Dawkins called project. So you can literally sit in this chair and predict outcomes without having to do them. And because we're all narcissists because of society and Instagram and all this, and I'm guilty of that too, we don't like to be uncomfortable because a narcissist story to themselves is you're the best. And so you don't, you, you, your worldview is messed up. That's a wiring issue. Um, let me put it this way. I meet people who think they're smart. Okay. What it really tells me is they've never been around actual smart people. If you're really smart watching this, let's say you have 155 IQ. That's what Bill Gates has and Albert Einstein were up there. My step grandfather had 155 IQ. He speaks 14 languages fluently. He can write Chinese. He, he's a chess master. He can play three other chess masters without looking at the board while they look at the board and beat all of them. If you're smart, you can do that. If you're not, I got good news for you. Warren Buffett says you only need about a 125 IQ to be very successful. But it's better to stay in your lane and just go, I'm not that smart, but you can hire 155 IQs. But that's an example of what I'm talking about of this rewiring. Right. <laughs> So these practical things will change your life. All right, since you have a concept called never be the bitch of your own mind. Yes. What do you mean by that? Your own mind is driven by deep evolutionary um, drives. So for example, narcissism is a protection mechanism, right? So your mind wants to tell you you're amazing. It makes you its bitch. You have to override that and go, you know what? I'm not that amazing. So let me go learn from amazing people. Do you that's have methods for people to do that? Because I think that's so important. So I tell people, don't trust everything that your mind says. Certainly yes. don't buy into all of your emotions. Just because you have an emotion doesn't mean that you have to act in accordance with that. Um, but how do you help people get over that? How do they overcome that? I think humans, for the most part, learn by osmosis. So it's hard to, to lecture people into success, but what you could do is you could inspire people to understand this. So for example, if you could, if school system could find all the 14 year olds and find out what they admire, in people, right? It's the reason I show Lamborghinis and Ferraris. So I got a lot of young followers and you know what 19 year old guys like? Lamborghinis and Ferraris. So I show that part of my life because then they listen to the other stuff. So first you gotta lead by inspiration. This has been proven over. You cannot pound stuff into people's brain. People actually do the opposite. When parents tell their kids, you gotta read, mm. nobody reads. But if I show a Lamborghini and Ferrari, which is the reward that people want, and then people go, how do you get it? I said, see all these books, I read them and put it. Then people, uh, I have more school kids reading books, I think, than anyone in history. I don't say that cocky. I'm telling you, it astounds me because all I had to do was put up a video with Lamborghinis. Right. When you're the bitch of your brain, you go, I'm just gonna freewheel this day. It's very, it's very hard to be organized. We're not, na dogs aren't organized. You ever see your dog organizing day? So if you wanna, you can either act on the animal side, which is just a wing life, or you can operate from a sense of logic and duty. And so I learned somewhat, I'm not even as good as Joel, to not be the bitch of my mind by just being around him for a while. And so that's the best way, find somebody that you look at them and you go, this is a person of discipline, a motivation, self-motivation. They don't need external motivation. They're motivated from within and spend all the time you can around them. And so for all of you who are really big on the hustle, your ass off, hustle in the networking side. It will help you because you never know who you're sitting next to. That's why I'm a big believer in going to conferences. Berkshire Hathaway Conference. It's the first week of May of every year these dudes are gonna die soon. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett, you can buy a B share for under 500 bucks. Buy a B share, you get a free ticket. It's insane. You sit there with two men on stage in a stadium of 18,000 of the top investors in the world. Wow. It costs you under 500 bucks. You sit there, it's only one day. I fly into Omaha and fly back out almost the same day. And you walk out just motivated. You're with the guy that their business. You know, we meet businesses and they're like, oh, I'm doing a hundred million here. They did 200 billion in revenue last year. I see people making fun of the Kardashians. I'm like, you're gonna make fun of the Kardashians? Look, Kylie Jenner, the youngest Kardashian in the last 18 months 
has done $400 million in revenue on lipstick kits and various makeup things with Kylie Cosmetics. Put that in perspective, L'Oreal, Maybelline, massive brands. It took them 50 years wow. as an organization with thousands of employees to do what Kylie Jenner did by herself at 20 at 18. You're gonna laugh at the Kardashians? Do you have to agree with everything the Kardashians? No, but like Abraham Lincoln said, I learn from everybody, even if sometimes it's what not to do. So you can just go into the Kardashians, reverse engineer their success, go, I like this, I like this, I like this, I don't like that, then leave out what you don't like. If you can pick up one gold nugget, whether it's from an in-person mentor, whether it's from a book, you become very wealthy in knowledge very quickly. One nugget a day, one nugget a day. It's like Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner said, step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. But you have to prepare for the fast spurts by learning step by step. Like you wanna become like a supercomputer where you just download smart crap from smart people. And you pick and choose. Like some people are like, Ty, I don't agree with everything you say. I'm like, good, I don't agree with everything I say. Like a year later, I'm like, wait, I was wrong.